Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Trabon low-level switches. Traditional Trabon reservoirs, such as those used on the LubeMaster and the ModuFlow or E-Series, as well as some of the other pumps that Trabon has made over the years, have the same low-level switch options. First, there's one option for grease low-level switches. No matter the size of your reservoir, the reservoir is going to have this little assembly sticking out the top which actually connects to a cable on the follower plate so to add the low level switch to this all we need to do is bolt a bracket on the top and then add a spring and a spring retainer and that gives you the ability to monitor the low level this one's already installed you can see how that all goes together but i'll demonstrate the installation of that in a moment there are a couple of exceptions, but the vast majority of the grease reservoirs that Trabon makes and now Graco makes will have this on the top. So if that assembly is there, then you can use the low level switch that I have here. For oil, there are a couple of different options. The most economical option is this simple float where there's just a little float on the bottom that the float itself can be removed and flipped over if you want to change the normal state. So you can set this up to be normally open or normally closed. And then there are just two wires coming out the top and they're both the same color because it doesn't matter which way you wire it. It's just a dry contact switch and it's just making and breaking a circuit. So all you, all you got to do is hook up your two wires to your controller or your PLC and send some power through that. These things mount on a one quarter inch NPT thread and there's a pipe plug in the top of each reservoir on the oil reservoirs. We'll look at that in a moment too. So this is your more economical option, just a real basic float switch. If you are using an oil that doesn't work with the switch, if it's a real stringy oil or something else that gums up the low level switch, but the pump still works, then there's another option available, which people refer to this as the toilet float because the way it works kind of resembles that float inside of your toilet. This one has a rod inside that goes in there and then, then the rod goes up inside this switch. And this is another one of these micro switches. It's similar to all these other switches that we use for cycle counting or like this one for the grease low level. But it has a little bit of a different end on it here because instead of that rubber boot, there's a threaded piece to receive this. But all this does is is move up and down to flip the switch. So this is again quarter inch thread because it's going to ins install in that same port on the cover of the oil reservoir. So those are your options. Now let's take a look at how these actually install on each reservoir. Here's a closer look at the top of our grease reservoir. So this is the assembly that I was describing. Now you can see it a little more clearly up close. And then there are these three holes that they aren't tapped, but there are holes there to receive the self-tapping screws that get included with the kit. So we're going to just be putting our bracket on here and tightening these up with a 3 8 inch socket. It may be tempting to put the spring on first and then put the spring retainer in just because you can get at it a lot more easily at this stage. But if you do this, the bracket's not going to go over that. So this is not the way to do it. You can't put that on first, unfortunately. So let's take that back out. All right, now let's do this the right way. Okay, now all three screws have been tightened and we can lift up the switch and squeeze that spring in there. The spring will sit down into the hole inside there to keep it kind of captured. So make sure that it's, it's situated inside this hole in the bracket. And now we can just pull the spring down with our fingers, slide in the retainer, and we're done. There, make sure the spring is seated inside the retainer as well, but this is sit situated the right way now. So now whenever the reservoir gets filled, the pin is gonna extend up and push that switch in and it will hold that switch in as long as there's grease in it. When it loses grease, it's gonna descend down and open it up again. 
Let's take a quick look at the wiring inside of the micro switch before we move on. Now that the black cover has been removed, we can clearly see that there's a common terminal, a normally open terminal, and a normally closed terminal. Back when I worked in tech assistance, I'd occasionally get the phone call where people would ask for a wiring diagram for this switch. Well, all a wiring diagram tells you is what these labels are on a connector that only has numbers or some kind of abbreviations on it. There is no wiring diagram for this switch because the terminals are clearly labeled common, normally open, normally closed. So if you ever call and ask for a wiring diagram, we don't have one because it doesn't need one. The switch is clearly labeled. So when you wire this, you're going to connect one wire to common and then you'll choose either normally open or normally closed for your other wire. It's going to just be a two wire connection because this is a dry contact switch. This is going to be true for the grease low level switch and also for the toilet tank oil low level switch. It's going to have the same terminals inside on top of that micro switch. Now when we install our oil low level switch, we're going to be looking at the top of the reservoir for this quarter inch pipe plug. In order to actually assemble the complete low level though, we're going to have to remove this whole cover and then we take the plug out and replace it with the switch assembly. It's the same for a tank. This one already has the low level switch installed over here, but this cover is easy enough to remove with just the six screws that hold the cover to the reservoir. Once that's off, then you can pull the plug out and install the switch assembly. But for the cylindrical reservoirs, if you look here, these heads of the bolts are seated into the cover, which means we gotta come all the way down here to the bottom of the reservoir and take off the tie rod nuts. So we'll take the tie rod nuts off and then pull the tie rods up and out of the holes. But I'm gonna to try to leave the tube in place just so that it's one less thing to be rolling around on my workbench. So let's take a look at how we're gonna do all this now. I used a half inch ratchet to loosen the nuts at the bottom of the tie rods and then I removed the nuts and the lock washers and I should be able to just lift my tie rods out now, but my assembly also has a high pressure blowout switch on the front. So now I need another tool. I need a 1 8 inch hex key to remove the bracket or at least loosen the bracket from the tie rods. And that's a real quick and simple operation. And it, it'll just hang here on the tubing, that's fine. Now we can lift our tie rods up and out. And now the cover will just lift off of the tube and now we can get at the port from both sides like we need to. Now to get this plug out, we just need a one quarter inch hex key and that'll loosen up pretty easily and just twist right out. And if you lose it, it doesn't matter because we're not gonna use it once the low level switch is installed. First with the, the typical, first with the simple float switch, this comes assembled, but it's not tight. So you just have to twist these two pieces apart and the wire will come out with the pipe. For this one, we'd put the fitting in first. That just twists in there and needs to be snugged up, but it doesn't need to be so tight that it cracks the aluminum or anything. This is steel, so there is a chance it could crack the aluminum. And then it's just a, a simple matter of pushing these wires through they come out the top and then we just want to twist twist these two parts together maybe that's a better angle just get that in nice and snug and now we could put this back onto the reservoir and install our tie rods again when you put this back on make sure the flip cap is facing the right direction it looks like this interferes a little bit with the flip cap, but it can still come around there. There, the, the hex position does influence how the flip cap goes past there, but the cap still works. Now let's take a look at how to install the toilet tank type of switch. A key detail here is that there's a flat on this round part for a half inch wrench. 
So you can use a half inch open end wrench to tighten that. And this piece comes apart here. So this is all able to spin, which allows you to orient the switch however you want it. So these two pieces here now are what we're gonna take over here to put into the, to put into the top of the reservoir cover. I'm just twisting that into that quarter inch threaded hole. So now we can get that tightened in there. Next we can now make sure that this rod is inside of this cylinder and we're going to just put that inside there. This is the, the actual toilet tank float assembly. And orientation matters for this because the ball, the float ball, can't be up against the side of the reservoir or it won't work. So we're going to need to, to rotate this to try to get it in the center. Okay, this is now oriented so that the ball is pretty much in the center and it's not going to be it's not going to be dragging on the side of the reservoir. It's free to, to float up and down. And then we can just slide our micro switch over the pin, over that rod that's extending through there. And we'll tighten that up with our wrench. And we just want to make sure though before we we get before we settle on a location that we're able to open our flip top. So there's going to be a little bit of an interference across the hex, but that'll work. There, now we can tighten that up. We have our half inch thread here for a conduit connection and underneath this cap, it's just like the grease switch where we have the three terminals clearly labeled and it can be wired either normally open or normally closed. So that's all there is to these Trabon type low level switches. Again, we still use these on a lot of Graco pumps in the Trabon family. So whether it be an old Trabon pump that you want to retrofit with a low level switch or a new Graco product with the Trabon brand, this is the way you do it. Our last step is just going to be to put the tie rods back in. And with these tie rods on the front, just remember to use that 1 8 inch hex key to tighten the high pressure blowout assemblies bracket back on once the tie rods have been tightened.